Senator Josh Hawley says that whistleblower David Grush's claim surrounding unidentified flying objects is pretty close to inform information he received in a briefing after the United States shot down a spy balloon, as well as other UFOs, this past winter. How Hawley told the outlet Wired, quote, the takeaway from the briefing is that they had thousands of sightings of these things over the years, which was news to me, so I'm not surprised necessarily by these latest allegations, because it sounds pretty close to what they kind of grudgingly admitted to us in the briefing. So I would love to follow up with Josh Hawley there to hear more details. So he's, if he's just saying that, well, yes, we got a report about UFOs, unidentified flying objects, right, that is well established. I, perfectly, I, I believe that our pilots, other people have seen objects that they can't account for, maybe have and have recovered pieces of objects that is that we're not sure of its origins. Grush was making the specific claim that he knows someone, he has spoken to someone who can who can speak to crafts that were recovered that are not that mm -hmm. that are not of human origin, mm -hmm. and also pilots that were recovered that are not of human origin. Mm -hmm. Is Holly saying that's what he heard in closed door meetings with on, on this subject? Because that would be pretty pretty wild. Yeah, I mean, it just, it sounds like the nature or pattern or whatever was described uh, in reaction to the most recent UFO event is similar to what he had heard behind closed doors. But that could mean that what he heard behind closed doors is about non-alien craft. I mean, to your point about UFOs just being, yeah, no, I, I completely understand. But what he is, but other things Grush has said, I mean, the idea of non-human remains being captured or craft, machine, technology that clearly is, is of non-human origin, that's a different kind of a thing than there was an unidentified object and it turned out to be a weather balloon or an enemy right. plane or whatever, a, right. a, a, another country. Right. But Holly was saying that what Grush is saying sounds like things he's heard you know, behind closed doors. Yeah. I mean, look, I, the, he's talking to someone else and I understand that he doesn't want to give up his source. Completely understand that. Grush. Grush. But there is something, um, we were dealing with this a little bit with Cy Hirsch's story. It seems to me that in some cases, there are corroborating details short of your source. So explain to me why you believe your source. I'm not mm -hmm. asking you to say, well, I believe my source because his name is da-da-da-da and he's a journal in the such and such. No. But I am asking you to say, well, specifically, right. what about the remains indicated they were of non-human origin? Yes, to that We're, point, that's why I specifically asked Cy Hirsch when we had him on. I'm like, well, did he have documents to show you, you know, plans, you know, paper. Sure. Papers. Sure. Or, or, or even, you know, how do you know that this organic matter was from was extraterrestrial? Did it have compounds in it that are not present on Earth? You know, there are there has been there has been a tradition of kind of fake science uh, museum exhibits in the Victorian era of monkey tops sewn onto dolphin bottoms, and you say this is a mermaid, and people go and tour this thing for years. There, there, you know, we used to live in a world where that kind of fantasy exhibition was very common. So, you know, I think it's reasonable to want to corroborate that the mound of flesh that you're looking at isn't just from a tapir or some weird animal that we have on Earth. A so, platypus. <laughs> sure. The weirdest animal of all. A platypus. Or what are these deep sea creatures or, or whatever it is. So is there, you know... What, what about the technology led people to believe that it had to be extraterrestrial again? Is it because it was made out of minerals that are not present or common on Earth? Is it because the technology could do things that human technology hasn't been able to accomplish? Levitate, go at warp speed, whatever it is. Those are the kinds of things which I think would be more reassuring to people who are Skeptical, And as the story continues to play out without more corroborating details, I do think that people's attention span is going to begin, begin to wane. Yeah. I want to see the put up or shut up. I keep saying that. I want to see, I want to see the report. <laughs> I want to talk to the action, not the guy who talked to the guy who knows something, but the guy who knows something. Yeah. I mean, do, do you have an... But I mean, some, and sometimes these things are accurate. Like we're, you know, we're talking a lot today and, and this week about COVID's origins. Michael Schellenberger, just on his Substack with Matt Taibbi, you know, reported that these are the names of the three people who got COVID first. They're scientists at the lab, hi suggesting 
beyond any like reasonable doubt that that's where it came from. It was not reported anywhere else. He had a confidential source or sources that yep. he couldn't share with us, and uh, and so we you know we reported that and we said well we obviously we can't verify it but. But this is a journalist we, these are journalists we generally trust who think have done good work, and that's what they're saying. And now this week, it was confirmed also by the Wall Street Journal under similar circumstances. So that, so sometimes, you know, somebody a little, uh, I don't want to say off the beaten path or not part of an, a, sure. an institution or, or an establishment does have information that turns out to be correct. This, sure. is, this is going to end up being a textbook case of that. Yeah. Now, I will say that I don't know that the Josh Howley kind of weighing in here mm -hmm. Maybe trying militates to in favor of it. Fever. Yeah, I, I mean, I think there's something to that. Yeah. This is obviously a hot topic. People, for whatever reason, maybe because they're bored or depressed by the current news cycle, are hoping <laughs> that there's something more out there other than another cycle of two candidates that we've already seen race against each other and a Congress who has no intention on uh, uh, following through on agenda items even when they're shared by a majority of the American public. I get it. It's why sci-fi has always been a source of escapism for me, too. You sure you don't want to take that trip to the bottom of the ocean? That is not the kind of escapism yeah. I'm interested in in the least. I'd rather go uh, up than down. Up than down. But, you know, I, jo Josh Halley weighing in doesn't do anything for me at all. Mm. What I would like to see is, you know, now, you know, the House is in Republican control. I would like to see them launch whatever kinds of investigations are necessary to get to the bottom of this. Is This really is something that Josh Halley and others see to be a priority. Declassify, declassify, declassify. Don't do it the Trump way. Don't just put it in a box and take it to your home, but like actually declassify it. Actually have transparency around this issue. What do you make of the argument that the timing of this particular story and of the earlier UFO story is a an elaborate distraction technique. I don't I, I don't accept that. It who is the who is the puppet master with this much control over the planet that they can I must distract the mortals with this I will inject this into the news cycle. Like who's the Who's really? the person doing it? The deep state regularly feeds uh, stories to mainstream media to get get them to talk about whatever or adopt whatever narrative that they. The deep state is doing it. The deep state is knocking us off. The intelligence agencies. Our focus. Yeah. So you, okay, so that's the theory: is that they're leaking alien stuff to distract from other things? Yeah, uh, maybe we, we want to talk really about bad. how the FBI needs to investigate aliens as opposed to defunding the FBI. But we're still talking about that. Well, maybe it's not effective enough. <laughs> you know, maybe they're working on it. But the idea is, you know, it, it, the, the, a lot of people are very suspicious about the timing of this particular story and the fact that we do tend to have recurring cycles of our, our aliens' real discourse. Would that theory mean that David Grush is in on it, though? Not necessarily. So I don't understand how it works then. Not necessarily. He could be, and I'm not saying this is true, obviously, but he could be a useful idiot. He could have been shown documents or informed in some ways that he went to the public because he really believes it's real. But he could be being hoodwinked as well. I mean, I'm going to be beaten up for not believing necessarily that not aliens exist. I'm going to get Robbie. beaten up for thinking that Robbie. that's a little too Look, out you guys, there, we need, the world needs skeptics. Every um, uh, fox needs a scully. Every molder needs a scully. <laughs> and, you know, I appreciate Robbie's uh, pushback in these UFO segments. Hopefully, though, those of us who believe will get further confirmation one way or the other as the story continues to be reported out. We're home arising for you right after this.